Hi everyone, today is a follow-up to my last video I made on how to take better holiday photos and it's sort of a Q&A because I got a lot of good questions from that video in the comments that I wanted to address here. I just thought it'd be easier to make a video than to try to type everything out uh, and hopefully avoid some confusion. Basically the first question was from William Hansen and he said, could you please do this again with the FL LM3 flash? He says, I use red eye mode but had to go high on ISO. And I was handheld because it was a big Christmas dinner and I used iFocus 2 at f8 to f11. And you also you stated that you're keeping warm colors off, which I recommended. And you're at a fluorescent white balance. All right, so there's a lot to unpeel there. And for those of you not familiar, uh, the FL LM3 is this little tiny flash that used to come with the Olympus cameras. And, um, you know, it's a great little flash for indoor use and, and working as a fill-in light or as a trigger to other Olympus flashes or generic flashes that have an optical trigger. For taking pictures like in a scenario I had before, uh, because this flash doesn't have a lot of power, you're going to run into a lot of problems. However, that doesn't mean you can't use it. It does help. Every little bit of light that you can get into your image, the better, right? So I'll give you a few tips on how to use this flash. Uh, indoors for this kind of scenario but let me address a couple of the things you said here is that you're using red eye mode and uh, you're shooting at high ISO okay so red eye mode is basically the camera will fire the flash a couple of times before it takes the picture and fires the flash and the idea being is that that those pre flashes will reduce the pupils in the eyes uh, to make a little smaller hole or iris so that you don't see the red eye effect and um, it works okay sometimes, but a lot of times it really doesn't make much difference. And what I recommend is generally try to fix red eye uh, problems in post-processing. Uh, it doesn't normally work too well on camera. And because this flash is drawing battery power from the camera's battery, uh, it's just going to drain your battery faster. So I don't recommend using the red eye function uh, in camera. Okay, you also stated you're shooting at high ISO and you're handheld. Um, so high ISO again is hard to avoid because this flash just doesn't have that much power and when you're shooting handheld I, I recommend you stay at at least 1 1 25th of a second uh, even when you're using this little flash because normally when you have a more powerful flash the flash will act as a fast shutter and essentially freeze the action so I've gotten away with like 1 15th of a second 1 30th of a second using flash but they were much more powerful flashes uh, with this flash you got to act like or use the camera like you don't have a flash at all uh, because it just doesn't have enough power uh, to illuminate the subject versus the ambient light to freeze the action now if it's very dark and this is your only light source yes that will work but generally speaking you're not working in pitch black right try to keep your shutter speed at 1 1 25th of a second when you're shooting people because even at 1 60th of a second i found that i still get a little bit of motion blur uh when i'm taking pictures of people you also stated you're shooting at f8 to f11 and if it's a big table you know i don't have a very big table it's maybe you know six feet right uh you may need to go to f8 to get everybody in focus around the table. Uh, so I understand if you have to shoot at f8, but I can't imagine you need to shoot at f11. Uh, and because that implies that you have a very, uh, you have a lot of distance to cover to get in focus, right? And this little flash just doesn't have the power to cover that kind of distance evenly. Typically, you know, when you're shooting at f8, f11, you have much more powerful off-camera flashes. Those are, those are like studio level type lighting when you're at f8, f11, generally speaking. So this flash was just not made to do that. So I, I don't recommend shooting at f11 at all. Uh, stay at f5, 6, only go to f8 if you have to. Yeah, you also stated you're using eye autofocus, right? So again, that implies you're using face detect. And if you're shooting one or two people at a time, I think you'll be okay as long as they're standing right next to each other. Um, or if you're shooting a group of people, five, six, eight people, and they're all standing, you know, side by side, relatively on the same focal plane, uh, if they're not more than six inches to a foot away, or out off the focal plane, you should be okay at f5.6, maybe f8. I don't see a reason to shoot at f8 with that kind of scenario. But if you're shooting a table situation where people are around the table, and now we're talking two, three, four feet difference, 
uh, where you need the depth of field to cover that kind of range, you need to be at f5, 6, f8 again, right? When you use face detect, the camera is going to focus on the first face that it finds. So take this table, for example. If you happen to focus on the first person here, who's maybe about one third of the way into the frame, and you're at f5, 6, this person back here will probably be in focus, just like I did in my last video. That'll probably be fine. However, if, you've, if the camera decides to focus on the person back here first, probably everybody from here forward is going to be out of focus. What you need to do is just manually pick your focus point to autofocus on. So again, I would pick about one third of the way in the frame at f5.6 for this particular scenario. If it's a much longer table, yeah, you might need to go to f8. The main thing is don't use face detect for this kind of scenario. Only use face detect when you have one or two people, or if it's a group of people, everybody's pretty much on the same plane. Now you also stated that you're using fluorescent white balance, and I have to assume that there's fluorescent lighting at that location. You just have to be a little careful. Fluorescent lighting generally gives off a little bit of a green cast in your images. So choosing the uh, fluorescent white balance makes sense. If they're using a uh, cool white, fluorescent lighting is they're using sort of warm colored fluorescent lighting and i'm sure you've seen this i see this all the time in my office real estate photography where i'll see the warm lighting and the cool lighting right next to each other you know they don't buy the right color temperature of uh, fluorescent lighting so uh if you pick fluorescent uh white balance your white balance is going to be off because the, there's different temperature fluorescent bulbs. So again, I, I do recommend you continue to use auto white balance and tweak it slightly in post-processing if you need to. But that said, uh, there are some tricks I'll show you here in a minute. So let me show you what I would do if I was using this flash in the same scenario, because like I was saying in my last video, I was using the Godox V1, which is eight times more powerful than this flash. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just uh, point the flash straight up so we get that nice uh, soft light bouncing off the ceiling. And then uh, I have my basic settings here. I'm at 1 125th of a second, f5.6, but you stated you were shooting at f8. So I'll just uh, go to f8. And um, we'll just take a picture here just to get a feel. I'm gonna turn the flash off and take a picture. And you can see we had to go to ISO 5000 and that's our ambient light right settings at ISO 5000. So what I did in the last video is I said okay let's cut the uh, ISO down by two stops so we're going to be roughly from 5000 to 2500. Another stop would be at like 1250 and then let's turn on the flash and then I would add one stop to the flash but if I take a picture with those settings it's okay, it's a little dark, right? If I had a more powerful flash, what I would do is just increase the plus two and see what happens. But if you look, there's really no difference. This is the current picture. That's the previous picture, no difference. And again, the reason being, this flash is outputting basically its maximum power and the camera's just not able to compensate one or two stops over the ambient light. So what I would do with this flash is I would just put this into full manual mode at full power like so. And let's do a test shot here. And it still seemed a little dark, right? I mean, we really didn't change anything because the flash was firing at full power before. So I'm just gonna increase the ISO until, let's try two thirds, until it looks it looks good, and, and, and you, can, you can kind of gauge this by your histogram. If we look at the histogram, you can see that I'm almost there. I like to expose a little bit over to the right. Actually, 2500 looks good, but if we go to 3200, we might be... Yeah, and I think that looks pretty good right there. However, if we come in close, the ambient light is still pretty strong, so there's still a little bit of a yellow cast over the entire image because, again, the flash is not outputting enough of its own light to overcome the yellow cast from the tungsten lighting. And the camera's auto white balance did a pretty good job, but we can tweak it a little bit more 
Uh, and you can do this with fluorescent lighting or amber lighting or anytime you have a color cast. So in my case, the color cast is a little bit yellow. So I'm going to reduce the yellow in the uh, white balance. And I can tweak that directly from the super control panel. And other Olympus cameras, you probably have to go in the menu to do it. But on this camera, you can see it says uh, A and blue. So A is amber, which is basically yellow, and then blue uh, <clears throat> is the B. And what I want to do is just shift and get rid of some of the yellow by shifting it over to the blue side. So let's try about four or about halfway and then take another picture. And if we compare this to the previous, see how that has a little bit of a yellow cast? And this one looks about right. And that's what I would do for this particular scene. Now, if you're in fluorescent lighting, what I would do instead of shifting it from amber to blue, remember how I said the fluorescent lighting gives off a little bit of a green cast? I would shift it about a negative four and take a picture and see what that looks like. Now I don't have fluorescent lighting here, so what it looks like now is now it has a slight magenta cast, right? But in fluorescent lighting, this should balance out nicely. All right, so that's all the questions I have for now. And uh, if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing, hit the like button, maybe buy me a coffee or make a small donation so that I can keep making these videos. But uh, I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you again soon.